Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this wonderful high school esports with Esports Ohio coaches meeting. This is our second installment this week. Uh, we had a meeting last night, so hopefully we've got all the the uh, bugs, kinks worked out, and we're ready to give you a great meeting and good information about competing remotely this year as well as in person for our fall season. Um, just to make sure that everyone can hear me, the audio is coming through fine. Can I get uh, good to go in the in the chat? Um, and also, as you look at the chat, you'll see that uh, our own Jacob Gabbers is our moderator of the chat tonight. And if you have any questions, you can pop them into the chat, and he will take care of you. All right. Thanks for the confirmation on audio. Looks like we are ready to rock. So, I am Nick Ryder. I am the president and founder of Esports Ohio, and I am super excited to be with you all tonight. Um, we're going to go through a coaches meeting on what to expect this season, the different changes with remote play versus inland play. And we are going to talk about how to be successful and how to make sure our students have the best experience possible. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into the presentation. And thank you for being here tonight. You're going to have a chance to meet some of our partners as well as some of the great people we're working with tonight as well, which I'm super excited about. So without further ado, just to recap on who we are and what we do, we are a 501c nonprofit, or 501c3 nonprofit. We are founded by educators, and we're just a, a group of passionate volunteers that work hard to make this opportunity for students because it's an opportunity we never had when we were in school. And we, we feel that electronic sports should be embraced as a positive educational and developmental change agent for all students. And we're trying to bring that into awesome. reality. And as you can see, we have our stream set up to where we get a follower drops, a neat little graphic of Chris Farley popped up there. These are things that you can do in your program to add some extra flair and give your students the ability to do broadcasting and stream development, uh, as well as the competitive scene. So our mission is to empower students by providing educational institutions with the knowledge, direction, support, and resources to implement, maintain, educate, and compete in electronic sports. In other words, we're a one-stop shop for eSports for all of your needs at the high school level for your students, for your faculty to get started, as well as for the competition and scholastic resources. We are here to help and our partners are here to help even more. We'll talk about that shortly. So awesome. our agenda for tonight, we're going to talk about the updates for this fall season. We're going to look at the schedule and overview. We're going to talk about the eligibility checklist and make sure that you are good to go, that you've, meet, you've met awesome. all the five requirements for this eligibility checklist. We're going to talk about the game info, what games we play, what new games we've started this fall season, and how you can get involved. And then we're going to talk about our scrimmaging and match procedures, as well as some tips for success that will help you get off on the right foot and get your kids uh, competing the right way. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to our league coordinator and overall rules officiant and jack of all trades, Nick Rackley, and he's going to run you through some of these new remote play guidelines. Alrighty, guys. Uh, thanks for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about some stuff. Okay, the great COVID, you know, it's just doing all sorts of wonders for screwing everything up. One of the big things that we started with here uh, at eSports, one of the big eSports Ohio that we really, really want to do is we want to make sure that kids are having a good time, that we're trying to create a safe online environment for them and allow them to basically grow as a team. Uh, we've been very forthright with that in the past. We would like kids, you know, in school and, we, you know, under under a coach and everything like that. And clearly that is not happening for a lot of great players and a lot of great uh, teams in our district. So we have a new remote play guideline. This is what we're doing for as long as COVID is shutting down schools. Uh, if you're going to play remotely, uh, you got to make sure we're following these guidelines. So just keep this in mind. All coaches will be required to vet their students' ability to compete online remotely in their competitions. You're going to make sure that you're going to need to test those player connections in practice matches and ensure that all equipment and internet connectivity and requirements are met for those teams uh, consistently. Uh, the one thing that gets more aggravation than anything in any type of online anything you're doing, especially gaming, is lag and cutouts and all these other kinds of things. So we want to try and limit that as much as possible. Uh, so please try and make sure that you are in with your kids and your discords. Uh, please make sure that you're working uh, to get those kids all lined up and online when they need to be. 
And also just make sure that if there's any issues you can iron out now, uh, that would be uh, absolutely preferable. As we move on here, remember that coaches are required to be present and active in the Esports Ohio Discord, much like we are with almost anything else that we do. Uh, if we were having a normal season, you would be required to be in the room with your kids. There is too many times where we have, you know, maybe some kids that aren't quite familiar with the way things go and you need to be able to help them as well as sometimes we have with uh, kids getting a little out of line or things like that. It happens, uh, but we need to make sure that we're maintaining that safe and very sportsmanship like uh, atmosphere and things like that. So we recommend that all coaches enter all matches in spectator mode when possible. And we definitely want you in your team discord. Uh, with that being said, we are suspending uh, the coaches rule that you cannot coach them during a game. We realize this could be a little bit more you know different but it should it should work out all right uh basically what we want to see here is that uh, we want to make sure that there is monitoring there is oversight and that this is going to you know reflect good on you as a school you as a team and then definitely us as esports ohio helping to facilitate this so definitely need that very big and passionate adult uh supervisor all matches are still required to begin between 3 and 4 p.m. on their respective days. Teams that are not present by 4.15 will forfeit. Teams that forfeit two matches will be disqualified for the remainder of the schedule. There is nothing worse, literally nothing worse, than when you got your guys all geared up, your, your team's ready to go and you're ready to compete, and somebody just calls up and says, well, we're not going to compete today. It's, it's, it's absolutely just shocking sometimes you'll sit there and you're like really pumping them up you're ready to you know get on and ready to get them played and hyped up and then all of a sudden they cancel uh, there is just absolutely n almost nothing worse than that so please uh, make sure that your kids are online by around 3 3 30 at the latest so that you're ready to go at four o'clock uh, this stands to all levels of play whether it's club jv or varsity so all of them will play at the same time. So that may mean that you are trying to be back and forth in a JV as well as a varsity match, and that may happen. So please make sure that the contact window is happening between 3 and 4 p.m. And please make sure that uh, you respect all these requirements and involved uh, for oversight and execution for all of our coaches and players. Uh, no shows are not going to be tolerated. Uh, we're not going to let that happen. And again, this could lead to disqualification and potentially even more uh, problems down the road. Uh, we want solid competition and solid competitors. And if we don't have that, uh, it just it makes it hard on the coaches that are really putting in the time and effort. And it makes it really hard on the teams that really want to compete. Uh, disconnection rules. Uh, we're going to have them. It's going to happen. Internet goes out, uh, especially uh, if you're in a much more rural area or maybe you're playing on a hotspot or something like that, uh, please make sure that you're checking out each game's rules under the stoppage of player player drop definition. Um, these are exceptionally important, especially if you have a little bit more of a fluctuation when we're talking about you know, who's playing where, if they are playing on a hotspot, if they're playing maybe at a library or something else. Uh, we need to make sure that we're trying to maintain a stable connection as much as possible, but we need to know what to do if there is a drop of any kind. So uh, please make sure that you review those disconnection rules um, and please try and make sure that you're competing on the most stable connection possible. Uh, this will help to just again, keep an overall smooth and uh, uh, considered appearance. And it will also just save a lot of he headaches and, and time wasted. So live streaming games is encouraged. We want you to live stream games. Oh my goodness, how great an opportunity it is you know, especially now with COVID, we've got a lot of high school sports being streamed. We got volleyball and basketball and all these other things. Well, it's even easier to live stream a game and we want that to happen. But what we don't want to have happen is screen sniping or any other type of advantage that's going to compromise the integrity of play. So in order to minimize uh, cheating, we have a couple of, you know, in-house rules here. All live streams in Overwatch must be viewed from the spectator mode of their team only. 
So if you're in Overwatch, there are rules and little things you can set for spectator mode where whoever's in the spectator, they'll be designated for a team. They'll only see that team, uh, their alts, their stats, the health, etc. And they'll still be able to capture the other team. They'll see the other team on the field and everything like that. But it won't reveal positions. It won't reveal anything else that's going to compromise the integrity of play. Live uh, spectating Valorant is currently prohibited. Um, we have pro uh, Valorant in club this year. Uh, we do this with all of the new games that we do, and we want to iron out all the major details. Uh, if everything goes really smooth this fall, it will be going varsity and JV like all of our other games in the spring. And again, the big reason is we just want to make sure that we've covered every angle. We want to make sure that unlike, you know, a lot of games that will just release and then we have to patch and patch and patch as we play. We want to make sure that this is ready to go at a varsity level right out of the gate. So if we run into issues or if you run into issues playing Valorant this fall, uh, please let us know. Um, and we also need to need some time to figure out how we're going to broadcast Valorant. So keep that in mind. Live spectating on Super Smash Bros, uh, Rocket League, Fortnite, League of Legends um, with the automatic spectator delay is going to work just fine. Uh, Hearthstone uh, are allowed as long as they're not providing an overwhelming competitive advantage. So again, if you're maybe doing it during deck trading, uh, deck uh, banning and things like that, uh, I would probably keep that uh, out of streaming until you're actually ready to play for the competition. So if you have any questions on any streaming or any other rules like that, please contact me. The no coaching rule, as we said before, was canceled for the fall season. So we want you on top of this. We want you to make sure that you're calling out your players if they're doing great stuff. And we also want you to make sure that, like, if they're maybe saying a few things that, you know, you don't really want them saying, that you're there to able to catch it. Um, there's nothing worse than, like, uh, your kid was saying this thing and maybe you weren't there to catch it and you're apologizing and stuff because we know you run good programs, but, you know, kids make mistakes. And we want you to make sure that, you know, you're able to catch it when it happens. And hopefully, you know, we won't have too much of that this season. Uh, what is this going to do for overall competition? Well, this may lead to some, you know, really big changes in competition. Like if we have a really big League of Legends coach and they're able to really coach during the banning phase and even when they're laning and stuff like that, uh, this could lead to maybe a small advantage. Uh, we're going to take that. Uh, as we can and hopefully uh, what this will do uh, is and we and we trust our coaches to to not give them too much of a competitive advantage but hopefully what this will do is just provide a better opportunity and a better playing environment for everyone we had an awesome opportunity uh, we love working with local uh, organizations and uh, running around notice my hair there looks so much better oh my gosh but I need to get in with you know Chalen and Nick I did not have a good beard growing I need to work on that experience we are working with many new organizations including the past foundation down in Columbus the Samuel I foundation out of California and the great uh, NACEF organization the North American scholastic esports federations and one of the great uh, people we got to meet down there was Andy, and he is one of the great opportunity uh, directors down there with robotics, and uh, he is helping us work with the PASS Foundation. And at this time, I'm going to turn some time over to him to explain what he's doing and how he's helping us to grow the Ohio Scholastic Esports Collaborative. Andy? Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Nick. Um, it's, I'm glad to be here again tonight and uh, talk a little bit about PASS. Uh, what we do and the, the recent formation of the Ohio Scholastic Esports Collaborative uh, with uh, Ohio or Esports Ohio and with NASEF. Uh, so as he said, I'm Andy Bruning. I'm the director of uh, bridge programs or student programming at the PASS Foundation. Uh, and I'm technically responsible for all the informal ed programming that we do. So whether it's esports, uh, robotics. So I also coach a first robotics team. We do underwater robotics. Uh, but it's all in that informal space. So whether it's after school, uh, during the summer, uh, design challenges, any any kind of thing like that. So it's it's really giving students that opportunity that they wouldn't normally get in school. We give them these opportunities uh, in this extracurricular, this informal space. Um, then another um, aspect of PAST is that we also provide teacher professional development. So we take these different programs, again, whether it's eSports, robotics, underwater robotics, whatever it might be, and actually then 
coach teachers to be better teachers using these types of activities, these challenges, these games um, in their classroom. Um, and so the beauty of what we do, and obviously then what Esports Ohio has, is that we were able to take those things together and form the Ohio Scholastic Esports uh, Collaborative. And so where we are right now um, is that we have taken NACEF, uh, they have their nine through 12 and actually middle school as well, but the nine through 12 curriculum. And it was uh, aligned to the California state standards. We took all of that information and we aligned it to the crosswalk to, to Ohio. So it is on our website and you can see um, here that we have the um, Ohio Scholastic Esports Collaborative website in our webpage on past site and you can go in um, and form a team there and that's going to give you more of a scholastic side of things to actually participate in a classroom setting if you want um, but like i said we're here to help with teachers we're here to help with students programming um, i'm really excited about this uh, esports is is very new to me i'm not a gamer necessarily but uh the competitive nature of robotics and other STEM type of activities and these challenges is just really cool. Um, I wish I'd had experiences like this when I was growing up. So it's just really fun to be able to uh, to give you guys coaches and then the students, uh, obviously the support that they need to, uh, to succeed. So um, I'll be on later if there's other questions. I don't know if uh, I covered everything from last night, but I'll be around. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Really appreciate it. We're super excited to be part of the Ohio SEC or the Ohio Scholastic Esports Collaborative. PASS is a great organization and NASIF as well. So um, thank you, Andy. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, speaking of NASIF, being a partner with us means you're also a partner with NASIF and the PASS Foundation. So please activate your free NASIF benefits at esportsfed.org. Uh, you'll see from the drop down list when you sign up, everything is free through NASIF, just like it is through Esports Ohio and PAST as well. Uh, you'll click the Ohio Scholastic Esports Collaborative and it will give you all of the Ohio resources as well as everything that they do. They do uh, free competitions, they do free scholastic training, they do beyond the game challenges, uh, and they also have a, an Overwatch and a Rocket League tournament this year. Uh, this fall season that aligns with ours on different days of the week. So um, it's another opportunity for your Rocket League and Overwatch teams to get extra competition as well. And uh, they are offering game licenses during the season, which begins in October for those two games as well. So activate those benefits today and you will get uh, tons of free resources for esports. So without further ado, let's talk about this fall season and what it is. We have all matches beginning the same times. And, and Jeff, uh, he covered that um, briefly. But we still have the same uh, recommendations for 4 p.m. start times. So we need to make sure that we're respecting each other's time. And all matches are still set to begin by 4 p.m. each day. So if you can start earlier, that's okay. I know some schools get out at 3 p.m. Some schools are electronic this year, so it's a little bit more flexibility. But we respect everyone's time, and we have a hard start time at 4 p.m. still. So Monday, League of Legends and Fortnite. Fortnite changed this year now that it's moved from club to a, a traditional game and league. Um, it's played on Monday nights with League of Legends. Tuesday is Overwatch. Wednesday will be Rocket League and Super Smash Bros. And Thursday will be Hearthstone and Valorant. And this is what the fall season schedule looks like. And if you ever need one of our resources, always remember that esportsohio.org has everything. All of our resources in one location for free. So everything you'll need to get started with your program is available there, as well as all the information about the league and the games that we play. So we have a seven-week season. Um, our awesome league manager, Nick Rackley, will be finalizing schedules and get them to you before the season begins you will know which bracket you're in and who you'll be playing so you'll have everything you need before the start of the awesome. entire season so he will get that to you after we close signups tomorrow so we'll work on that over the weekend and hopefully sometime mid next week depending on how many teams we have in the waiting room uh, we'll get that out to you shortly but Next week is our scrimmaging week where you'll reach out to, to schools in the Discord, and we'll talk about that here in a second. And then you'll have seven weeks of competition, 
as well as a makeup week and wild card spots for playoffs if we need to have wild cards. And uh, a fall finals tournament will be completely online this year due to COVID. Unfortunately, we we're, we're not set to have a land tournament because of the restrictions of the state, but we are going to stream it. We're going to do more of our awesome streams like this. We're going to get some color commentary involved, and we're going to do some cool highlights and plays of the week and so on and so forth. Uh, Signups do close at 11.59 tomorrow, so that was asked in the chat. So the el eligibility checklist. You need to make sure these things are done by midnight tomorrow night. So submit the Esports Ohio program application. Okay, that's pretty simple. That's the only printed form that we have. Two, register all of your teams online for competition. That's what your coach will do. The responsibility of everyone in this meeting is to make sure that your teams are registered. And also, as a coach and a leader of students, you know it is also your responsibility to rally the kids to make sure they finish their responsibilities. Number three, registering individually for competition. Um, and then you're attending the preseason coaches webinar right now. Four, so you can check that off. Uh, make sure you do the uh, mandatory attendance survey here at the bottom right at some point tonight uh, to receive your attendance credit for this meeting. Um, and that's been posted in chat a couple times. And scrimmage and discord and compete. That is lastly what starts for next week. So if you ever get stuck or want to know more about this eligibility checklist, you can simply go to our website. And on our website, if you go down to competition at the top here, and then scroll to 2020 fall signups, it's got everything in a nice, neat order for you from top to bottom. Coach responsibilities, here's the eligibility checklist. Here's your program membership application form where you submit it. Here's where you can submit teams to compete. If you have a team logo that you'd like us to use and we're using a different one, you can submit your new one here. Here's a new coaches walkthrough video. Uh, I know we're going through a lot of stuff very quickly tonight. This new coaches walkthrough video gives you everything step by step and small bite sizes so you know exactly what to expect. And then your students only section is where your students will be routed to fill out their forms awesome. for competition this year. So make sure that your students choose which level of play correctly and whether or not they are the captain of your team in the student form sign up. So make sure that you're doing that. And then mostly important the coach's master sheet is at the bottom it is secured with a password that we can send out to you in the discord in our coaches only channel um, but it will contain all of the season information for our students so the the coach's master sheet is invaluable it is your home for making sure your teams are ready to compete so if you look through this with me um, the league readiness tab is your friend down here at the bottom the first tab it will show how many teams we've got filled out currently and then it will show how many players we have currently filled out as well so right now we have 208 teams that are registered we have 1,082 students that are registered before the deadline so far and if you scroll over in this sheet this is the big thing you need to make sure underneath each game as you scroll right just remember you have to scroll if you're green green means go it means you're golden so if you've got seven players registered for your varsity overwatch team that is awesome now that means you have six players on an overwatch squad and then a seventh would be a sub so that's beautiful you have enough to compete you're golden but if you are in the red like some of these schools it means that some of your students have not yet registered so you need to get on them to make sure that they register and they're ready to rock so your, your rosters are incomplete until they turn green in these games. And to see which students have registered and which have not, say that you're looking in Overwatch, you simply scroll over to the right here, and you look at your Overwatch players, and you can quickly and easily see you know, which students have registered from your team. It's listed alphabetically, and you will see their names and find out who's ready to play. So... That's an easy way to do it to make sure you can reach out to your other coaches through here for your contacts if you have any information or need to help set up a scrimmage or anything like that. Um, also, program paperwork tab, we will update the attend coaches meeting tonight with everyone who is here from last night and tonight um, and make sure that your program form has been uploaded as well. It will auto populate when you upload your form, but our attend coaches meeting is not auto populating yet. We're doing that manually for the time being. So check back. We'll get that updated. Uh, and then rosters complete. These are the teams that have their rosters complete. 
these are the people who are green in the league readiness check. So if you're in rosters complete, it means you are ready to rock and ready to play. So we have a lot of coaches that still need to get things squared away yet. So make sure you're using this sheet. And once again, to get to it, you just go to our website, competition, all signups, and it's all the way at the bottom, coaches master sheet. And like I said, we will post that, that uh, sheet information password to get in in the coaches discord channel. So, yeah. If you have questions as we fly through some of this stuff, please post them in chat as well, and Jacob, our moderator, will take care of you. So, I've brought up Discord a bunch because Discord is kind of how we do business. It's our communication, it's the way that we talk to all of our coaches, all of our captains, all of our other players in the league. You need to be on Discord. If you aren't, please get on there. There's a link right on the front page of our website to join. Um, be sure to follow the proper naming conventions when you're in there. There will be rules and procedures on how to get started and then how to get roles for the certain games that you're interested in or you're coaching. Uh, so, for example, when you log into our Discord, it will look something like this. It's kind of a chat-looking server. And then at the top, you'll be greeted with our rules and you will be giving... Uh, help commands and joining but one thing I want to pay attention to that a lot of people get confused about is the get roles channel if you want to join specific oh, roles so for specific games simply use the the icon here and click on it and it will give you the roles for the games that you are interested in and it will open up the channels down here to where you can uh, set up scrimmages for example so overwatch say you want to scrim if you press that Overwatch button, it will give you access to the Overwatch channel, and you'll see Overwatch scrims right here. And you can see we've got a lot of teams that are looking to scrimmage already. So Stebbins, Barberton, they're looking for some Overwatch scrimmages next week already. So that's where you can go to set up some scrims. Our scrimmages are set up by the coaches. Our league will be set up by our league manager, but all scrimmages are at will um, by you guys. And the cool thing about us, um, not being sanctioned by any athletic or governing body is that we have no limitation on our scrimmages. So if you want to scrim at will, please do. We want opportunities for our kids. Uh, our league and our season is awesome, and it's for the bragging rights and for you know getting competitive against your local schools and, and statewide schools as well. But you can scrim to build your program at any moment. If you don't make the fall registration, you can still play against schools in Esports Ohio at will. Uh, when you guys are ready. So just keep that in mind. Scrimmaging procedures. We just talked about it. Do you have to scrimmage? You don't necessarily have to scrimmage if you're a seasoned veteran, but I would highly recommend it. If you're a newbie, definitely scrimmage because you need to test your district's firewall. You need to make sure that these games are going to work. There's nothing worse than queuing up for a game. Your kids have been preparing all week. They're ready to go and the other team can't get on because the IT hasn't opened up the firewall to allow League of Legends play yet. So make sure you get in there. Make sure you test it out and make sure that your equipment and your students are ready for week one. That is what next week is all about. Ironing out the bugs. Then takes us into our match procedures. This will begin uh, in two weeks. So play in every level of game, like we said, is to begin by 4 p.m. Identify your opponent and contact them on Discord. The most important part of your roster is your captain. Your captain will be in charge of communicating with the other team's captain, and all captain information will be available um, for all captains to see and contact each other for their matches in advance. Uh, coaches and captains should contact each other for confirmation for the match. So this could be several hours before the match or a day or two ahead of the match to make sure, hey, we're good to go for 3.36 on Thursday. You know, get an exact time uh, where you guys will be queuing up and ready to play. If, by chance, you do need to do a makeup, no last-minute reschedules are allowed. All makeups need to be scheduled 24 hours in advance, and they have to be agreed upon by both teams. If one team does not... Uh, cannot find a way to make it work. Most of our community has been pretty awesome about reschedules, especially during this time. So, so try and get the match in if you can, but if there's absolutely nothing you can do to work things out, reach out to an ESO board member and we'll, we'll see if we can come, come to a conclusion or if we have to, to put a forefoot down in the books. 
Number three, plan to be online 15 to 20 minutes before you know your match is scheduled to start. So that way you can start to wink, or work out kinks with communication. Your captains can do character selection and map banning, and they can be ready to play uh, the match. And reminder to check the rules for any match disputes, any match restarts, disconnects, or anything missing from match procedures that you may not be aware of. A good rule of thumb is to make sure your captains and all your teammates have a copy of the rules and they know them well. Number four is huge. Please save our league manager the hassle. Winning team is the only team that is supposed to report the match results. Let me say that again. The only team that reports match results is the winning team. Okay. There is one case where the losing team could uh, report match results, and that is in case of uh, a violation of rules or to report toxicity. Um, that is okay to do that in the match submission form, and then we will look at any dual um, submissions that way. And number five, coaches can submit stats by Sunday of the week played. Coach Rackley will be working with you on doing stat sheets. So... One thing we're adding this year, and sorry about the font, we are doing play of the week submissions. Okay, these are this is the same page where you log match results, which is just on our website in a Google form, and you will be submitting the plays of the weeks. If you had a sick highlight or something cool happen that you want to get out there and you think it's worthy of something like the ESPN top ten, get it to us. We want to see it. We want to celebrate it. We want to award you. We want to give you prizing. We want to get your students some ESO swag. We want to celebrate awesomeness because that's what it's all about. It's about being great competitors and it's about showcasing your abilities. So submit your plays in video files of no larger than 100 meg. It's a pretty big size, so make sure it's, it's a clip of a video that you want us to look at and we will commentate it and put it on our weekly streams and choose our winners each week. That's the goal. So, some tips for success, some things that will help you get started. Avoid sharing athletes if you can. It's very tough to have a kid that's, you know, going to golf, golf practice, and then they get back at, you know, I'll be back by four, and they're not back by four, and you have to forfeit. Sharing athletes is the same with any other traditional sport or inter in athletics. You don't want to share an athlete if you're playing the same season. It just gets tough. Make sure you keep your esports computers updated. There are giant updates on these games that come out every week. Make sure you've got some people to do those updates regularly. And become friends with your IT department. Your ID, IT department is super important because they are the people that will need to open your filters. They will be the people that will have to troubleshoot your issues when you're not getting enough bandwidth or you're having any IT issues or firewall issues. Make sure you have good friends in your IT department. Also, be sure to have substitutes in each one of your games. Subs are important. If you've got someone who's sick, if you've got someone who maybe has grades issues and might fall off your roster, a good rule of thumb is to always have two subs for each one of your varsity roster teams. Uh, especially now that we've changed our substitution rule. Most of our games are a best of three or a best of five series, and you can sub in between your games. So um, you can rotate your subs in regularly, and that will be good. So... Always have subs. Print out a copy of them rules for your kids. We talked about that. Remember the winning team only posts the results. And identify your team captains and make sure they take a leadership role early. They are in charge of your communication for your team. They are the voice of your team to Esports Ohio. So choosing your captains is probably the most important move you'll make as a coach. Make sure you've got someone who's a good communicator and if not, Make sure they become a good communicator through this. That is the most important part. And then stream your matches to Twitch so you can review later for footage or improve. If it's one of our games that we can't stream live, uh, stream it and broadcast it to your local machine and save that footage. Uh, just don't put it on the internet until after the game's over. And then you can review it after the thing. So you can still record your match footage. You can still look at it, but just don't stream the ones that could, you know, compromise the integrity of competition but we want people to broadcast we want stream shoutcasters we want people to be on your support of your esports program just not comp competitors at this level we want everyone multimedia designers uh, stream engineers graphic artists social media marketers we want 
kids to get involved. So, make sure your students have accounts and game licenses for the games they wish to compete in. The only two titles that cost money rather than our council game, um, Super Smash Bros, are Overwatch, which is 20 bucks, and Rocket League, which is also 20 bucks. But, Rocket League is hopefully going free to play very soon. We're hopeful that that will drop in the near future. So get your game licenses. We equate that to basketball players needing to purchase their basketball shoes. We recommend that the players purchase the license individually under their name. That way they have it to build up their experience, their XP, and to take that account with them when they're done, as well as to avoid school licensing issues. Uh, a lot of these esports don't have good bulk licensing uh, options. So if you want to buy a couple accounts for your tryouts or to have on your esports machines, um, you can do that. Uh, if you need to use a PO, you can go to Best Buy or GameStop and uh, buy some cards or game cards to buy them uh, that way. But like we said, we prefer if your players have the licenses um, themselves. And involve your students. Have your students take ownership of the program. Have them run it like a club where there's a president, an officer, maybe there's a stream team, maybe there's a marketing team. Structure it in a way that's going to get kids involved and have them take ownership in your program. So, there's the tips and tricks. And now, what do we expect out of you guys, the people that are in this meeting, to make sure that Esports Ohio remains non-toxic, remains the highest of standards, and that we're giving our students safe and awesome opportunities? Well, come to this meeting. You've done that. Help all players sign up in the Google Forms so we make sure that everything's ready to go and nobody misses out. We want to make sure everyone's green in that master sheet. Collect all that paperwork and turn it in and be active and available for communication in the Discord server. As you can see, um, we, we really respond fast to your responses for the most part in Discord. If not, it's the same day, almost every day. So be active. If you have a question or you're having trouble or difficulties or you can't figure something out, somebody else has already been there. We've been doing this for a few years now. We've, we've been through about all the bugs and, and we can help you. We can help you in any way, anything you're struggling with. Uh, be an advocate for eSports Ohio and educational eSports in your district. You will be the eSports face of your district and whether your program is successful or not, whether your kids are toxic or not, it will affect it will reflect your school district and your efforts. So we will help you to get to the best you can be. And we ask that, you know, you be an advocate for esports and, and all of you already are. Promote and support a non-toxic environment. That's integral. We know that video games are toxic in general. If you go to any online game and play for long enough, you will run into some colorful characters saying some, some things that you might not want to say in front of your grandma. So... These are things that we need to make sure that we are correcting and we want to build a better gamer for the future. So we're going to do that through all of our help and by legitimizing esports in the right ways. So participate in a postseason informal exit survey. That will be part of your coaching duties as well as know how to navigate that master coaches sheet that we showed you earlier. That's it. So without further ado, we need some help. Rackley really needs some help with onboarding people in your communities, uh, letting them know that esports is a thing. Uh, there's nothing cooler than kids competing and building rivalries locally to the schools that they play and everything else in traditional athletics. So uh, if you want to be part of a committee to help get the word out, to help look, maybe you're, you're, you're stellar at one of these games, or maybe you know a lot about the rule sets and you're, you, know, you want to get involved in a committee for, for rules for procedures, for um, onboarding, for scheduling, for anything. If you want to get involved, we need help. We have grown exponentially over the past two and a half years. We started two and a half years ago with 16 school districts, and last spring we had over 130. So we are blowing up, and we need help. Um, and we'll show you how many people are involved right now, and we'll introduce them here in a little bit. But it, if you're just joining us, remember that mandatory attendance survey. There's the link to get your attendance. So thanks, Jacob, for posting that in chat. Real quick, another tournament opportunity is the NASA Fall Tournaments. Like I said, they will be playing Overwatch um, starting October 5th, and that will be on Wednesdays. And they will also be playing Rocket League 
starting on Sam on October 5th, and that will be played on Thursdays at 3.30. So check out esportsfed.org again. Activate your NASIF benefits. And those are two more league opportunities that you'll have to play uh, nationally. So coaches password we will post in the coaches only channel of Discord uh, to keep uh, things safe. Thanks for your question there, Trudge. So NASIF, once again, just pop into Esports Fed, register your club, register your students, choose which tournament you want to play in, and you're good to go. So without further ado, the cool stuff. We already know which games we play. So we'll cruise through some of this. And this form will be available to all coaches in the coaches channel after this meeting. We play carefully chosen titles. Why do we choose these titles? Because these titles are what provide opportunities for our students at the next level in collegiate esports. And they are also age appropriate titles. We live and die by the ESRB ratings. So we will not ever offer a mature game to our students because we are educational folks and we uh, stick to the values of age appropriate titles. Now we understand that first person shooters are kind of integral to esports in general. First person shooters are super popular and create a lot of uh, collegiate esports scholarship opportunities, um, specifically uh, in Ohio. All of our Ohio universities offer FPSs for scholarship opportunities that offer scholarships. So we wanted to make sure that we had that in here, but we are not playing any you know, blood and gore, mature titles. Everything that we have is based on ESRB rating to be approved by students 13 and up in, in alignment with our, our students that play. So that's why we chose the titles that we chose. And we also chose one from one of the most popular uh, genres of games, that being the MOBA with League of Legends. Uh, we have uh, common sense parent game reviews on each one of these slides. So if you want to use them for selling this to your school district or explaining more about why we chose these games, feel free. Rocket League. Rocket League's a 3v3 game. It's awesome. It's just soccer with cars. Overwatch is a 6v6 first person shooter that is cartoon based. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is a our one only console only game. It is a played on Nintendo Switch and it is a fighting party game and it's played 1v1 and we structure our game like tennis where we have five players on a team the ones play the ones all the way down to the fives play the fives and the the best of five uh, wins the match fortnite fortnite we play in three sets of of duos uh and that is a six player team we play a two game set and uh that is growing in popularity in the league so far we just used it as club in the spring and now it's a regular league game so we'll see how it goes hearthstone is our card collectible game uh, it's played 1v1 in teams of three and the cool thing about hearthstone is it is played on any cross platform much like rocket league and fortnite it can be played mobile as well uh, and then valorant is our new game this year it is a 5v5 uh, first person shooter uh, from riot the people that make league of legends and it's rated teen. Cool thing about Valorant is that it's free uh, to play for everyone. And it's played on PC. And we will be playing one match for our, our league structuring of this. So let's look at some cool pictures. So the arena examples that we're looking at right now. These are just proof that one size does not fit all. Uh, there is no right or wrong esports lab set up, but we wanted to show you some of our, our partner schools and high schools across the state just to give you a glimpse of, of what they're working with. Uh, some setups could just be, you know, a classroom with a switch and playing some. Uh, here was my, my setup last year. I had uh, boot camped IMAX that we made work to get Overwatch on somehow uh, because we didn't have the money to buy esports machines, but we made it happen. Um, up in the top right corner, uh, those students built those machines custom cases and and that's what we did this year in my program we built it into the curriculum where our students learned hardware a plus net plus comp taa certification standards and they built our machines from scratch uh, and then you've got you know some more labs where they had custom cases as well some were builds that were brought in um, that's jacob set up from deploy in there it's pretty sweet in the top right corner how they have a streaming computer and control uh, some, some of our friends from the career technical schools went above and beyond and 
black lighted out there the arena it's pretty sweet and then uh, uh our vice president jeff carana at akron stem he's got a suite set up in in his lab as well so just give you a little bit of inspiration but the part i'm most excited about is to talk about some of our partners that we've made uh this year and i am going to introduce some great people to you and give you them a chance to talk to you and tell you a little bit more about our mission together and how this year of esports ohio is going to be the best year ever it's going to be the biggest it's going to be the best um so without further ado we have partnered with the United States Army. They are our fall premier season sponsor. Uh, they're our advertising partner this year. They will be working with us on our streams. And as you can see from our stream, we've we've added them to our stream banner for our sponsors. And they will be working with us uh, throughout the season. Um, but without further ado, I'm gonna let them talk a little bit more about it. Uh, the specific point of contact from the Cleveland Re Recruiting Battalion of the Army, uh, Staff Sergeant Ken. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Staff Sergeant uh, Munez. Um, I'm part of the Cleveland Recruiting Battalion. We cover the uh, uh, completely uh, Northeast Ohio. Uh, we have military representative in every single school. Uh, so p please uh, feel free to, to reach out to, to them um, or reach out to me, send me an email or you know phone call, and I can put you in contact with your local recruiters. How they can help you, they can help you um, in different ways. They can help you with uh, coaching. So if you need help uh, from, you know, somebody from the outside or, or whatever, just in case you need some help, we can help you with the uh, coaching. Uh, another way that we can also help you is by you giving us advertising space. So let's say in your arena, you have a, you know, some space for a banner. Uh, we can create the banner and, you know, give it to you and pay for that banner uh, for that advertising space. Uh, and that way you can, you know, you can use that to, you know, build more, more computers, get more computers or whatever you need to. Um, uh, like I said, that's my contact information. Uh, hit me, send me an email, give me a phone call and I can put you in contact with your nearest uh, military representative. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, Nick, if you have anything else, yep, that's all I have. No, we're Thank super, you, everyone. we're super excited to be partnering with you guys. Uh, appreciate it greatly. Thank you for your service and thank you for your partnership. Thank you. Thank you for all the support. No problem. We're happy to have you. So here's the contact information. If you want to reach out for some sponsorship or advertising opportunities with the Army in your facility, please do so. This this uh, will be available again in the Coaches Channel after this, um, this presentation is, is over. We are also excited with another partner. We are working with Aries Sportswear this year. Aries Sportswear will be our uh, sole affiliate for providing apparel for our esports jerseys and any anything that you want, basically. Any apparel that you could use spirit wear. Uh, we've shopped around and we've seen some of the quality and pricing and Aries is the best. We can confirm. <laughs> we've looked around and we are super excited to be working with them. So I'm going to, to pass it over uh, to Laureen and let her talk a little bit about Aries and our sponsorship. Hi everybody. Um, my name is Laureen. I'm the marketing director for Aries Sportswear. We are really excited to be working with you guys. Um, and you know, like Nick just said, we have a lot of different things for, for the teams and, and a lot of great opportunities. So um, one thing that we do that's a little bit different is we offer what is called, we call it the white glove approach, which means that you, first of all, you get great pricing. So you get the best that's out there. Um, you have a dedicated um, focal point, like a, her name is Tonia. She's also on the call. Um, who will be handling your accounts and making sure that everything runs smoothly, that you have everything in time, that you have what you need. Um, what we also do is we, we give your teams free online team stores. So the team stores will have the apparel in it that you've, that you've chosen. Um, we will set it up for you completely. We'll brand it for you. Like if you have specific colors, um, we'll make sure we manage everything. We close the store out for you. We do everything. So there's really nothing for anyone to worry about. Um, we also create the logos for you. And, and that includes like all the art on your shirts, um, anything that you want. Like if you want an actual logo, like what we have here, you'll see this, this design that we created. Um, we'll make something custom and there's no additional cost for that as well. So that's, that's really nice to have custom art cater to your team. Um, we do recommend like a two color logo because for these packages here, two color logo is what we go with. 
Um, so the three packages that we have, there's uniform packages. We have the game on basic, which is the really nice wicking tee that we have. Um, it, you have two color logo on the front and then on the back you have the gamer tag. And then the level up premium is the hex tee, which is really cool. It's got this really nice pattern going up. And also just so you guys know, there's different colors. It's not just the Navy. So it's any color that your team's associated with. Um, it also includes a two color logo and the gamer tag. And then the one that's, that's above that is the ombre tee, which is very popular. Um, it's called the ultimate MVP package. So you would pick one of these, we would put it in your store for you. We would make sure your team is exposed to it and has everything. And, um, also in your store guys, you'll have, you'll have hats, hoodies, masks if we need them, the, the sweats, the tees, like everything will be available for the teams. Um, something else to consider if you're trying to fundraise. Um, a lot of people start just like mass stores. They start them now. They start fundraising that money so they can have this for their teams. Um, and then if you don't mind going to the next page there, Nick, real quick. Um, and what we'll do here is with the fundraising, um, you'll be you'll be able to, you know, of course, like have this fundraising dollars. But we are offering that if 40 stores are opened by a certain time frame um, and those 40 stores total, exceeds $30,000, which shouldn't be hard to do. Um, Aries will be providing $2,000 in scholarships for your teams. Um, that's four or $500 scholarships. And you guys can, you know, we'll leave it up to your discretion to, to distribute it to who you feel deserves those scholarships. So that's a very exciting thing that we're offering. Um, and we hope you guys will enjoy that. Um, so that's, that's something that's very cool that Aries does a little bit differently. We're super excited about it. <laughs> We're super excited to get our store open as well. So I know there's been a lot of requests for some ESO merch. So we're excited. We're finalizing ours and that should be dropping soon. So everyone in the, the Discord and coaches can see an example of what a store looks like. It's not just the jerseys, you know, like Lorraine alluded to. I mean, you can put anything and everything that you want in it for a great way to fundraise for your team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's what we have. Um, if you guys also just look real quick to your right, you see those those t-shirts that have masks built in. Those are super popular. They're brand new. They're from Badger. Those are really cool because they look like regular like lightweight t-shirts. You just pull them up, and you're masked, and you're done. So you don't have to worry about anyone losing their mask with those t-shirts. Very cool. Yep. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. We really appreciate it. We're super excited about this partnership. I know several of our committee members have already bought uh, their jerseys through Aries, and they think it's top-notch quality. And the customization, awesome. I mean, it's awesome. So thank you, thank you. We're super excited. You're welcome. Lastly, but not least, by any means, we have the Ohio Army National Guard. We're super excited to partner with them as well. They are going to be working with us as an advertising partner throughout this school year. Um, and they're going to be with us from the start to the end, from fall all the way through spring. So we are super excited to have them as well. And uh, I believe I have Diane or yes, I have Diane tonight. You do. Yep. You Excellent. had uh, Josh there last night. And so we thought we'd divide and conquer and uh, get, uh, get some of the coaches to meet both of us face to face. Um, but we're, we're also uh, around the entire state um, as far as the National Guard goes. For, for those of you that don't know, um, we've got about 11,000 folks here, traditional soldiers. I'm actually a retired soldier. Um, I've been retired for about 15 years. I went in right out of high school. Um, but I've been doing this for about 15 years with the, with the recruiting battalion. And, um, at the national level, we have uh, a lot of things going on with esports. So they've been encouraging the states to get awesome. a little bit more involved. And um, as Nick knows, uh, you know, our counterpart in Indiana talked about their partnership that they started up with their state association for esports. So that's when we got in touch with Nick and uh, started the conversation. So we're excited for things to get going as well. Um, again, our, our national is a little more, uh, uh, you know, advanced as far as involvement with esports. We do have, you know, an esports league where it's almost like a, a MWR morale welfare, um, you know, uh, entertainment kind of thing where where our soldiers do compete. Um, we do have some gamers within our recruiting battalion. We have ten areas around the state, um, so we should uh, easily be able to get uh, schools in touch with any of the. Um, 
uh, folks in the local area so that you can you know talk to those folks that are actually in the communities that you live in uh, we are in like 44 counties out of the 88 um, as far as armories or, or recruiting offices uh, and our our soldier base is from every county and within the state um, as far as our state level program this is it so we're looking forward to see how it evolves um, we're just kind of learning as we go. We're kind of in that process. Uh, we're looking forward to spring finals since uh, things don't seem to be working out really well in the fall, but you know, we're all kind of in the same boat. So um, I've got both Sergeant Moeller and my information on the slide set so that anybody can reach out at any given time. Um, and, and we'd be able to put you in contact or any of the coaches in contact with uh, the National Guard representative assigned to their school. We have someone assigned to every every school in the state uh, vocational schools as well as the traditional high schools and uh, colleges as well so you know again we're we're looking forward to seeing uh you know how this uh advance uh, uh pa advertising package can evolve and uh hopefully we'll be getting some more communication out to the coaches here in the next few weeks as things get a little bit more firmed up with our with our uh, uh, marketing agency that's kind of managing the whole program so well diane Thanks. thank you very much i i super i appreciate it yes and if you have any questions for diane please post them in the chat and uh, once again just we are blessed and excited we are a nonprofit, so without our partnerships with these great orgs and and you know the ohio Army National Guard, the United States Army, Area Sportswear, thank you very much for making esports a reality for our high school students. We couldn't do it without you. So certainly, certainly appreciative. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. And once again, all of the contact info for all of our sponsors and partners will be available in this presentation afterwards. So as you can see, here are the people behind the scenes. So if you ever hear me talking about Rackley or Karana or Gebers or Kalik or Joff, um, this is what we look like. <laughs> um, we are just, we're just some passionate educators um, that work in esports and in education, and we're out to create opportunities for students. So I'm Nick Ryder. I'm the president and founder of Esports Ohio. I'm also the coach for Cary High School, uh, as well as the director of technology by day. Uh, I just want to make sure everyone knows that we are a completely volunteer board and advisory council. We do this because we love it, not because we make money doing it. Um, and we're doing it for the for the kids. Kids first is, is kind of the way that we always make our decisions. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to introduce each one of our board members that are here tonight. Nick Rackley, I'll let you talk a little bit about your role. Good to be here, guys. Uh, thank you for doing this. We can't do it without you. Uh, my role is uh, co-vice president here. I help run the league. We do all the forms, all the back end stuff so that you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, make sure that we're maintaining that integrity of play and uh, help to get you all scheduled so you know who you're playing and know uh, who you're going up against and hopefully create some good rivalries for the future. So I am the Bluffton High School uh, eSports coach and I uh, teach social studies and, and am an assistant technology coordinator here at Bluffton as well. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Up next, we have Jeff Carana. Hey, thanks, Nick. Uh, yeah, my name is Jeff Crown. I work for Akron STEM High School during the day, fixing pretty much only Chromebooks all day long. Um, but other than that, for Esports Ohio, I'm the co-vice president. Uh, I am the uh, event coordinator, um, kind of handle uh, getting all the live events, you know, put together and scheduled and all that, um, which I'm hoping to get back to this uh, upcoming summer uh, if everything smooths out a little bit. Um, yeah, thanks, Nick. Thanks, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to get back to some in-person events, too. Jeff did a great job running our LAN event finals at Tiffin University last fall. It was awesome. So looking forward to getting back to that. Next, we have Jacob Gebers. Jacob is filling two roles. Hello. Good evening, uh, coaches. Uh, I'm Jacob Gebers. I work in a point high school in the IT department. Um, I'm secretary and treasurer. Um, looking forward to the season starting. Wish everybody good luck. Always feel free to reach out in Discord. 
um, if there's anything or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, have a good evening and thanks for attending. Thanks, Jacob. Really appreciate it. Jacob is, is wearing a lot of hats and he's your moderator in Twitch tonight, so we appreciate all his efforts. Thanks, Jake. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Jalen Kalick. Jalen, or er, Jalen Kalick. I, I, I said your name too quick. It like blends together. It's so beautiful. The first and last name, they're just similar. Coach Kalick is Tiffin University's esports coach, and he is our Collegiate Esports Advisory Council member. Hey, Jalen. How's it going, everyone? Uh, yes, my name does have pretty much the same letters throughout both my first and last name. Um, as Nick alluded, I am the head coach for Tiffin University's program. Uh, we were the first varsity esports program uh, collegiately in the state of Ohio and one of the first 10 in the country. Um, so we've been going at this for almost four years now um, at the university level. I work in an advisory role within Esports Ohio, ensuring that we get the best esports competitions that we can. Um, I'm pretty much always available uh, on Discord because I'm always on it for work anyway. Uh, so please, if you guys have questions uh, about the current state of any of the games or how you should run a practice or coaching or anything, please reach out. I'd be happy to help. Um, and then hopefully soon, um, I know there's a lot of regulations, but I'd like to be reaching out to you uh, to schedule a visit, come check out some of your practices, meet some of your players, and hopefully bring them to Tiffin University in the future. Thanks a lot, Coach. We really appreciate it. And yes, take advantage of what he's saying. If you need help coaching or you want to have a site visit or meet with the Collegiate program, uh, please, please use Jalen. He is available via Discord all the time, and he's happy to help. So take advantage of that awesome opportunity. So once again, reach out to us. Here's all of our Discord IDs. And once again, this will drop in the chat afterwards. So if you need to talk about, you know, league management stuff, Rackley's your man. If you need to talk about regular organizational stuff with esports i'm your man if you want to talk events you know sponsorships venues karana is your man if you have anything you need uh you know notes questions about board member board meetings or financials jacob gebbers is your man and then your collegiate scene is chalen and uh, we also have jake Schaff, which i kind of skipped over uh, i'll go back for a second he is our advisory council member uh he is our business uh, advisor as well as our twitch server not twitch i'm sorry our discord server moderator and as well as our admin of that he runs our discord server keeps it running clean and smooth and makes sure that our mods are doing their jobs and that it is staying non-toxic and school cool so that is our crew that's how you get a hold of us we are open for communication we have an open door com policy so reach out to us uh, some upcoming events we've got going. We will be doing weekly broadcasts and coverage of games with help from our partners at the Army and the Guard. We hope that both of them can join us in some of the streams upcoming to kind of break down play-by-play -play and what's going on. And then we will be doing our online fall finals as well on our Twitch channel that you are watching tonight. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you get those alerts whenever we go live so you don't miss any of the action. And then we have it on the books. We're hoping this COVID thing blows over and we can get back to some normalcy by spring. Uh, all of our partners are going to make this event the best event that we have had so far. So we are super excited about the Esports Ohio State Tournament that will take place at the University of Akron. Their million dollar esports arena that's behind glass underneath their football stadium. It's sick if you have a chance. Go check it out. Uh, we will be there uh, that first weekend of June. So looking forward to that resources they're all on our website check them out they're all hyperlinks in this presentation as well make sure you're on discord all of our information drops first on discord and on twitter so we also post things on facebook occasionally and our mailing list sends out all of our important comms so make sure you join our mailing list make sure you follow us on twitter and you can dm us directly in twitter as well so yep just keep that in mind uh, these are some FAQs, but as I as we glance through these, the chat is open, and we are getting ready to wrap things up. So thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, go ahead and type any questions you may have in uh, the chat, and we will moderate and get those, those answered for you. Um, and after this meeting, we will be moving over to the Discord voice channel in Coaches Only Chat. And uh, if you move over to that channel in the Discord server, we will 
personally answer any questions that you think might be dumb or you're scared to ask. There are no dumb questions. We are here to solve any problems that you have, any questions that you may have. We want you to have a successful season, a great program, and we want your kids to have a blast doing this. So, without further ado, we will move through some of these FAQs. Uh, I'm not going to read each one, but I will answer all of your questions. Okay, Trudge, good one. How do we get to the coaches only section on Discord? You just need to DM one of those people. So if you go up to our server right here and you look at one of the league committee members, all you have to do is ask one of those people. If you double click on them, you can message them and say, hey, I'm a coach for this high school. Can I get the coaches tag? And then we will tag you and you will have the ability to see all of the coaches channels, which are right here. Coaches only, coaches voice. So coach's voice will put you in a voice chat. We'll talk after this meeting. Coaches only will give you all of the, the things that students won't see, only coaches will see. So that's kind of where we do all of our communication with between coaches on just general questions. Great question. Do we still have the tag if we were in last year? Yes, you do. You still have the tag if you were in last year. Great question. And these are just some simple, simple questions. You know, can it be under athletics? Does it have to be, you know, a club? No, it can be whatever your school district wants it to be. So esports are awesome in that way. So versatile. So without further ado, we'll get some of these. <laughs> yes, Vitamin Clutch, that is true. Esports Ohio, super free, always been free. We are always going to try and make it free. We're always going to try and bring the best opportunities that we can to you with the help of our partners. Thank you, thank you, U.S. Army. Thank you, thank you, Ohio Army National Guard. Thank you, thank you, Area Sports, where we are super excited to be able to offer all of this to you for free. We are going to do this as long as we can for the betterment of students, for giving students who might not have a spot at school to get involved with something that they're passionate about in esports. 75% um, of our students that compete this is their first ever sport they've competed in. And we are super proud to provide those opportunities. Uh, we know that we're just a board of people doing this, uh, of the passions that we like, but you guys at home are the ones that are making it happen. The coaches, we can't thank you enough for running your programs day to day, day to day, boots on the ground, getting these kids the opportunities they need. And I just want to say thank you. I'm so, so happy and blessed to be able to be part of this organization and to create these opportunities for students. Thank you so much. So, appreciate you spending some time with us tonight. We did pretty good, just over an hour. Uh, thank you for all the hard work you do, and join us in the Coaches Only Discord chat, and we will answer all of your questions after this. So, without further ado, anybody have anything else for the good of the order? Looks like we're ready to rock. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been an honor, and we will catch you in the coaches-only chat after this. Thanks so much, and have a great night.